Welcome everybody. This presentation is for my family, my friends, and also my loyal subscribers. A semi-live rendition of a talk I recently gave at the Collaborative Science Conference last weekend. The basis of this work comes from hundreds of publications that arose from cellular work, animal studies, and also human trials. The main biochemistry that drives most, if not all, metabolic disease is the polyol fructose uric acid pathway. And we're going to get started with this right now. The greatest resistance to accepting fructose uric acid metabolism as a main driver of metabolic disease is the assumption that only fructose activates this metabolism. We now understand that activation of fructose uric acid metabolism is as much about the glucose as it is about the fructose. When we eat carbohydrates of any type, both glucose and fructose arrive at the liver from the digestion of that carbohydrate. Both the glucose and the fructose at certain concentration will be processed by the same pathway. And that's what we're gonna get into now on this slide. As glucose enters the liver, it will be faced with a choice that you can see on this slide. The right fork leads into classical glycolysis, the substrates, the mitochondrial substrates that that glycolysis produces, and then the transfer of those substrates into the mitochondria where they are burned to produce energy. The alternative choice is the fork on the left. And this leads to a storage state that's characterized by the conversion essentially of that glucose into fat and into glycogen with the stimulation of systemic inflammation and also alteration in nitric oxide signaling changes our relationship with blood pressure. At the front end of this fork in the road, you can see a switch. This is a molecular switch that we call the survival switch, and it is constituted by four enzymes, glucokinase, aldose reductase, fructokinase, and phosphofructokinase 1. Now that in itself, I don't expect you to remember. What you need to understand is that this switch opens and closes depending on the concentration of glucose. When glucose concentrations are low, five millimolar or less is approximately equal to 90 milligrams per deciliter. So when glucose is less than 90 mg per deciliter, the switch is closed for the storage fork to the left. And the incoming glucose is pushed into glycolysis where it proceeds in an irreversible manner through that chain of chemical reactions to produce lactate and pyruvate at the end of that pathway, which is then transferred into the mitochondria, those substrates are converted into ATP, the energy currency of the cell. And you can think of ATP as being molecular money. It's what we have to spend in order to do the things that humans do. When glucose rises above 5 millimolar or above intracellular 90 mg of, of glucose per deciliter, the switch is opened towards the storage state, the systemic inflammation, the alteration in the nitric oxide signaling that happens within our tissues and organs. So now let's take a closer look at specifically what happens. This is the only biochemical slide that we are going to look at in this presentation, but I feel like it's a necessity to deal with this. Under elevated glucose, as I said before, that's concentrations of intracellular liver glucose above 90 mg per deciliter. We are going to activate glucokinase and aldose reductase that are shown in red here. Glucokinase is an enzyme that under low glucose conditions is sequestered in the nucleus. And once we elevate the glucose, then glucokinase is released from the nucleus of the cell. It's translocated into the cytoplasm and then in combination with aldose reductase opens this pathway to the right. That glucose is going to be converted into endogenous fructose. So this is one of the important aspects that is misunderstood. And that is the idea 
that we don't need added sugar coming in from the outside in order to produce fructose. We literally do it in our organs and the liver in particular is really, really good at this. So once we've elevated that glucose above five millimolar or 90 mg per deciliter, then the aldose reductase converts that glucose through a series of two steps into endogenous fructose. And that endogenous fructose literally meets this enzyme that is called fructokinase. And I call fructokinase a trapdoor enzyme because it is catalyzing an irreversible reaction, all or nothing. That means that once fructokinase is operating, that this pathway is blown wide open and 100% of the, the incoming glucose that's being funneled down to endogenous fructose is being converted. And we have the opening of fructose uric acid metabolism. The opening of fructose uric acid metabolism causes causes an acute decline in the concentration of cellular ATP within the liver, an acute decline in phosphate. With the activation of another enzyme that is called AMP deaminase, that results in a sudden acute rise in uric acid within the liver. And uric acid is a signaling molecule that downstream is going to change the function of the mitochondria the powerhouse of the cell. The uric acid is a signaling molecule that is going to alter the function of the mitochondria. This happens in everybody once the glucose is above this threshold that I'm talking about. Now, before we get to the change in function at the level of the mitochondria, I'm gonna come back to the funneling of the glucose through the polyol pathway to endogenous fructose. So underneath the aldose reductase, that enzyme is catalyz catalyzing the entry point into polyol, which is pushing the glucose into endogenous fructose. So under these conditions, the polyol pathway is converting above 30% of the intracellular glucose coming into the liver into endogenous fructose. Not only that, but the rate of this reaction is above 10 times the rate of the entry point of glucose into glycolysis. The end result of this is that we have the pooling in yellow now of glyceraldehyde and dihydroxyacetone phosphate. These molecules are funneled back into glycolysis underneath the PFK1 step, the phospho fructokinase 1 that you can see over there on the left, creating a Warburg effect. The net result of it is the pooling of lactate, which among other functions that I will get to, circle back and inhibit PFK1, which is the enzyme that is catalyzing the irreversible commitment to glycolysis. So once we activate fructose uric acid metabolism, it functions in part by decreasing the availability of the glycolytic pathway. Remember at the beginning of this talk, we talked about the burning. So we are shutting down the burning aspect, right? We're not producing the substrates in a functional way anymore that would normally be transferred into the mitochondria where they would normally be burned. Now let's turn to what's gonna happen to the mitochondria because we've opened fructose uric acid metabolism now and we have this elevation in the signaling molecule, uric acid. First and foremost, we see a change in morphology of the mitochondria, the powerhouse of the cell. They become smaller, they become fragmented and imaging studies show that the inner membranes of the mitochondria are altered. Additionally, and in layman's terms, we see that the signaling function of uric acid causes inhibition of energy production. It stops the burning of fat and sugar. It stops the transfer of fats into the mitochondria and it inhibits the processing of ammonia. And lastly, it is driving eating behavior. When we ask the question, what happens to the insulin when we activate fructose uric acid metabolism through the glucose effect in the liver, we find that the insulin receptor at the plasma membrane of the liver is physically decreased we see that the insulin receptor substrate 2 protein is also decreased. We see an alteration 
in the insulin receptor substrate one signaling. We see the upregulation of hepatic insulin resistance. This is where we have the, the synthesis of fat with the formation of oil droplets directly in the liver and the packaging of triglycerides that are being pushed out into the circulatory system at the same time when gluconeogenesis and glycogenolysis, that's the production of glucose, is actually not shut down at the same time that we have glucose coming in from the circulatory system into the liver and being processed. We have the elevation in the synthesis of diacylglycerols, ceramids, and acylcarnitines. These are known instigators of insulin resistance. And lastly, we have the downregulation of lipolysis at the level of adipose tissue due to the insulin effect and also lactate. To summarize the effects that we have in the liver when we open fructose uric acid metabolism, we induce glycogen synthesis. We induce the synthesis of fats. We induce systemic inflammation and we induce the alteration of nitric oxide signaling, which downstream will alter the condition of the cardiovascular system. Now it is often said, what happens in Las Vegas stays in Las Vegas. However, in the liver, when we open fructose uric acid metabolism, what happens in the liver does not stay in the liver. We have a wave of four factors that are propagated downstream through the circulatory system to our peripheral organs. This wave includes hyperinsulinemia, hyperglycemia, elevated lactate, and elevated uric acid, all four of which have intracellular effects that will drive the kinds of changes that I talked about here in the liver. I believe that the chronic activation of fructose uric acid metabolism on a systemic level drives most, if not all, metabolic diseases. And these effects are as much about the glucose as they are about the fructose. There are two final points that I wanna cover. Listed here on this slide are the other activators of fructose uric acid metabolism, including added sugar, the effects of processed food, ultra processed food, and also I'm showing common examples here of foods that we see throughout our culture that are considered healthy. All of the foods that are shown here in these pictures blast open fructose uric acid metabolism. And lastly, we know from hundreds and hundreds of studies that fructose uric acid metabolism is a powerful driver of the diseases listed here. Eliminate the drivers and eliminate the drivers of these diseases and live a healthy metabolic life.